Hello guys, this will be a quick tutorial that will give you some techniques for rendering views outside of Windows and Blender. We'll first cover some of the things to consider when choosing a background image for your window view, and then we'll move into a full example where we'll also place in a glass shader. So I've got a quick example scene here where I just have a room and a scene. The main thing you have to consider when choosing a background image is where the horizon line is going to be. That is going to be very dependent of where your camera is in the scene. The area where the horizon line is, is not affected by the height of the camera. This horizon line is actually staying in the center of the frame. We can see the perspective of the room is changing, where the window is moving up and down, and the trees were getting a slight parallax effect, but the horizon is staying in the same location. The only thing that's going to affect the horizon line is the rotation of the camera. So considering that, I'm going to use an image of a New York skyline. I know I want the building to be in a high rise, so the height of the image is going to be important, but I'm also going to be looking for one that has a horizon line that's mostly in the center of the frame. I want my camera in the scene to be parallel to the ground. I don't want to be angling it up or down. An image like this obviously wouldn't work because this image is taken from the ground. If we go back to our example here, if we're going to be rendering and pretending that this camera is up really high, you can see that obviously the trees look like they're down below from us now, but the horizon line is actually going to stay in the same position. Thus, I think one like this is going to be useful. There's a few other things you have to consider when choosing an image. One will be the focal length. Generally though, the larger the image, the more room you will have to play around with because you can scale it up and down to match the focal length of your camera in the scene. So I'm gonna download this one. And in my scene here, you can see that there's nothing too much going on. We just have a mannequin a camera with a large focal length, 120 millimeters, looking out of this window. And we also just have an area light for now. So with windows though, they obviously have a little bit of depth to them. So I'm just gonna start by extruding out a little bit. And windows generally have a little bit of an indentation of where the glass is. So I've just selected this new ring loop that I made with the loop cut tool. I'm gonna to extrude along edge normals and I'm going to just make a little bit of an indentation for where the glass would sit. Because I've got this selected here, this selection, I can press Shift S, cursor to selected. That's gonna put it perfectly in the middle. I'm gonna tab back to object mode and add in a plane, which will just be my window glass. So I'll just rotate that and make sure it's covering the window. For now, I'm going to hide it because we should also bring in our image plane. That will be our background. So to do that, I'm just going to drop in a plane. I'm going to give it a new texture. I'll call this background view. And I'm just gonna quickly drag in where, I've, uh, where I saved that image. So I'm gonna put in the base color. I'm gonna switch over here into the material view so I can see it. I'm also going to put it in the emission here as well. It just means that it doesn't matter if it's going to be lit, we're always gonna see it. We don't want it to be shiny at all and reflect anything. So we're gonna turn the roughness all the way up to one and we're gonna turn the specular all the way down to zero. Now it's not gonna matter which way it's facing, it's, we're always gonna see what's on the image. So what we need to do is we need to copy the rotation of the camera for this image. So with this image selected, I'm gonna shift click the camera, then up here on rotation, I can press N to bring this up in the viewport, or I can just press this button here. On rotation, I'm going to right click and select copy all to select it. That's gonna give this the right rotation. Now that this is in the camera view over here, remember to get to the camera view, just in the 3D viewport, press zero on the numpad. Now I'm gonna move this image and I'm gonna to have to scale on the X axis so that it matches the resolution of the image. Obviously you can make this perfect by checking what the resolution of the image is and making sure that the plane matches the dimensions. But now I'm just gonna roughly move it in place. If I turn on my grid here, you can see that the horizon line in this, from this perspective is about here. So I can first match that, which would be about there. And I'm just gonna move it somewhere relatively interesting and make sure it's the right ratio. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to my render view just so I can see what's going on. I am currently in cycles, which is what I'll work with for, for now. I'm not gonna find an environment map that will roughly match this. So I'm gonna to go to polyhaven.com and select HDRIs. Let's say city. And I think something like this will do. So I'm gonna download this one and I'm gonna to go to world, shift A, add in an environment texture. 
load in that EXR wherever you saved it and pump it into the color. You can already see that this is given this scene a little bit of light. To me, feels like it matches the background environment. I'm going to add in another light, shift A, light area. I'm gonna rotate it R minus 90 here so that it matches the window. And I'm gonna change this to portal, which basically means it's going to pump in the light from the environment map. Okay, so if we press Alt H, which I'm just gonna get my window back here, and now I'm gonna make a glass shader. So I'm gonna to go to object, create a new shader, I'm gonna call it glass. Now with glass, I could just turn the transmission all the way up, the roughness all the way down, and we would generally have a glass shader done. I don't like the way that this reacts because I don't have control over the reflections. So for the most part in Blender, quite often we make a custom shader, which isn't that complicated. It's just going to be two base shaders. So the first one is going to be a transparent BSDF, and the other one will be a glossy BSDF. Glossy just meaning it will give us reflections. So if we see what that one will look like, we're going to turn the roughness all the way down and you see we basically get a mirror. And if we have just a transparent BSDF, it's just see-through. So if we mix these together with a mixed shader, pump these both in, put as the output, we can now control this factor value and control the reflections that we get. So maybe I want it to be quite a little bit more reflective, I can easily do so. And there we have it. There's a few things to consider. When we wanna see something reflected in the windows, we have to bear in mind that we have to have something to reflect. Windows aren't gonna make reflections of just nothing. So say if I was to just duplicate my light here, I'm just getting another light in the scene. You can see it here in the reflection. Remember that for any material that's reflective and you wanna see reflections, there has to be something to reflect. This is also where you could get stylized, there's a whole world here of things to start getting into and playing with. One other note that's kind of a useful tip when you do this technique is if you select your environment background and make it a child of the camera, that just means when you rotate the camera, the background is always gonna stay in the same place. In some situations, it's not preferable, but in quite a lot of situations, it's actually a useful thing to do. You could also change the color of the glass, changing the transparent here, which will really change the color of what it sees. Uh, you can also change the color of reflections, give them a little tint. One thing you probably should do is your background, it's better if you move it quite far away and scale it up. That just means it's gonna be a bit more realistic if you choose to do something like depth of field with your camera. Um, if you wanted to change this to EV, you'll see that we're not getting this as see-through. Whenever you make a see-through object, you'll have to go over to the material properties and change this to alpha hashed for both of these in the material settings. You'll also want to, in your settings, turn on screen space reflections. This will give you uh, really mixed results. Uh, so bear in mind that it works well when it's sideways like this. When things are a little front on and you have something close to a window, it can look a little bit weird. So your mileage may vary on those ones. But let's say we're looking at it from this angle. One thing that can just give glass another extra level of realism is making it a little bit distorted. Glass is never perfectly flat. So we could use something like a wave texture and distort it quite a bit. To maybe something like this, add in a bump node, place this wave texture in as the height and place this into the normal of the glossy. At first it's going to be far too strong, we've lost all the reflections, but if you turn it way, 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 way down, you'll see what it starts to do to reflections. Now it should actually be very, very low, so like 0 0.001. And you can see we get start, start getting subtle variations on the reflections. So with just my quick playing around, maybe something like these settings works a little bit. It looks a little bit better in cycles, as you would expect. If you need to make the outside a little bit brighter, just in the emission strength here, 
you could bump up this value and it will get brighter.